um, as you all know, the school exam is coming soon for um, the 2017 mock. So that's why I made this video for you to prepare um, for the math standard level. So I've selected 10 questions that you must know for a 2017 mock exam. But obviously, in this short video, it won't be able to help you to cover all types of questions. Okay, but at least you need to know these 10 questions, and it will help you to um, grasp, grasp the concept um, for each six topics. Okay, so let, let us move on to the first question. So first question is on sequences, okay? So this one is the summation sign with sequence. Expand the summation sign from n equals to 5 to 8, 5 power, uh, 5 power n, right? This is one whole thing. And find a sum in total. How do you do that? So basically, question A, you just need to expand. Summation sign means adding each term, right? So adding all the terms. So 5 power n, n is 5, plus 5 power of 6, plus 5, 7, plus 5, 8. And then just do it on your calculator, right? So very simple. So you can just add it up. So for this one, 5 power 5 plus 5 power 6 plus 5 power 7 plus um, 5 power 8. It will be a very large number. Yeah? So 487500. Zero, zero. And then question B. Find the value of n equals to 5 to 20. 5 power n, right? So basically, uh, how do you do that? First, we expand a bit to see the pattern, right? So plus all the dot to 5 power 20. So obviously this one you don't want to type all that in your GDC, right? Because there are so many terms. So we'll use the equation for the sum. So for this one is what kind of sequences? This is geometric sequence, right? Because you can see multiply 5, then you get 5 power 6, multiply 5 again, you get 5 power 7, yeah? So we know that the sum of the geometric sequence is u1 times rn minus 1 over r minus 1, right? So u1 is the first term. But for this equation, it's all on the data bullet, okay? You don't need to memorize. So 5 power 5, and then what is the r? r is the common ratio, second term over first term, so which is 5. And then power n, so that is, like, most of them will make mistakes right here, okay? Because they will write 20, but that actually that's wrong. Um, and so first mistake, people will write 20, and then the sec second common mistake, people will write, like, 15. Okay, they just use 20 minus 5. Okay, they thought like there are 15 terms. Many students don't know how to calculate the terms if it starts with like other number uh, except 1. Yeah, so now I'll teach you the method. So this is wrong method. And the correct method is, let's say, if I give you n equals to 1 to 2, 5 power n, how many terms do you have? Obviously, you don't have one term, right? Because 2 minus 1, and then you only have one term. So that means... If I expand like this, then you understand. So 5, 1, plus 5, 2, we have in total actually two terms. So how can I get this number easily without expanding? 2 minus 1 plus 1, right? So it's 1 plus 1, that will be 2. So same, same logic applies to this one, 5 to 20. So 20 minus 5 plus 1, then you will get 15 plus 1, that will be 16, yeah? So 5 power 16 minus 1 over r is 5 minus 1. So you get that, right? So the key trick for this question will be on the number of terms. And then, you just type in your GDC, right? So 5 power 5 times 5 power 16 minus 1 divided by 5 minus 1, which is 4, yeah? Then we get the answer. So it's 1.19 times E means 10 right here, right? 10 power 14, and that's it. Okay, so it's a very large number. And then for C, explain why uh, starting from n equals 5 to infinity cannot be evaluated. So 5 power n plus 5 power 6 plus dot 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 to 5 power infinity. So that actually implies you're using the sum to infinity. Okay? So sum to infinity, the equation is u1 over 1 minus r, right? Only applies to geometric sequence. Multiply 5, multiply 5. So we got r equals to 5. But do you still remember, when you want when you're applying this equation, okay, the r must be within minus 1 and 1, right? Okay, that's the condition. And obviously, r equals to 5 is out of the range. So that's why we cannot, uh, that's why we cannot calculate the answer, okay? We cannot put the 5 in, right? Okay, so that is how you explain um, the answer, yeah? So that is the first question. And the second question is on the topic 2 function transformation, right? So we got the uh, graph right here, and um, on the same diagram, sketch minus f minus x, okay? So many students, um, they are afraid of the minus sign right here. So most of the weak students, they, they can only handle question like this, 
okay, fx plus 3, and they know this one is going up or minus 2 going down, okay? But if I add negative inside the bracket and outside the bracket, then they usually mess up, okay? So now I'll teach you the method. For negative inside the bracket, affect x, right? And then outside the bracket, affect y. So what does it mean? So if I give you the graph like this, okay, this is fx, and how about the f bracket minus um, minus x? So the negative inside affect the value of x, right? So let's say this one is 0 and 2. So all the 2 become negative 2. Then it will be like this. So flip, right? Reflected in the uh, y-axis, right? So affect y. But usually I don't memorize like, okay, reflect in the x or y-axis because it's kind of confusing. Because inside the bracket affect x, but reflect in the y-axis, right? So that's why I only memorize one thing. That is affect x. Inside the bracket affect x. Then you just draw the diagram. 2 becomes minus 2. Then you know that this one will flip to the left-hand side, right? And also, if fx is like this, minus fx. So outside the bracket affect y, right? So let's say the y here is 3. So then it will reflect down, okay? Flip down to minus 3, yeah? You get that. So basically for this graph, then it will flip to the left and flip down. So the first step, flip to the left, okay? Of course, you can use pencil, So, but I'll draw the first step for you first, okay? So you have this, and then what happened is the second step, right? So the second step would go down. So 4 becomes minus 4, right? And this point becomes minus 2. So we just need to connect all the dots, right? So minus 4 becomes 4. So we just draw it like this. So this is the final answer. So you get that, right? Reflection inside the bracket, outside the bracket. So I repeat, inside the bracket uh, affect x, outside bracket affect y. So now you understand this kind of question. And for gx equals to fx minus 2. So find g2. So many students will do it like this. So of course, now you have to sub in 2, right? Okay, so I believe you know that. So 2 equals to f2 minus 2, then you, you have f0. And then student will just write 0 as the answer. But that's wrong, because it's f0 function. When x is 0, what is the y value? Because fx calculate the y value, right? The whole thing is y. So you need to find out when x is equal to 0, and then you look at the original graph. So here, 0, 2. So the answer here is it should be 2, right? Yeah, and then describe fully on the transformation uh, that the that maps the graph of f to the graph of g, right? So that means uh, graph of f x now becomes f x minus two inside the bracket of f x, right? So if minus two, that means shift to the shift to the right, okay, by two units. So that is basic transformation rule. So if you don't understand this, you have to go through my lesson on the transformation, okay? So this is very simple stuff. If next time I give you fx plus 2, then you know that this one will shift to the left by 2 units, okay? Yeah, so let's move on to the second, uh, third question. So the following diagram shows the graph of fx equals to p cosine q x minus r plus s, right? So this is tr trigonometry transformation, yeah? Okay, so we got 4, 12 uh, for the maximum, and then the bottom is 10 minus 6, right? So minimum, maximum. Use the graph, write down the value of P, R, and S. So what is P value right here? Outside the bracket affect the Y, right? So it's actually the amplitude. Amplitude means the uh, half of the vertical distance, okay? So here we got 12, and this is minus 6. So how do you calculate the whole distance here? Because you want to find half of the vertical distance, right? So that will be 12 minus minus 6. So divide by 2, then it will be 18 over 2 is 9, yeah? So then P is equal to 9, right? Do you get that? And then for um, the R value, so R value here, oh yeah, so the general rule is always Y max Y minus y mean over 2, okay? So that's the general rule that you need to know. 12 minus minus 6. Don't use the x value, okay? Because y uh, refer to the vertical distance. And then for r, because for cosine, we know that it should start with 0, okay? But now the graph shift to the right by how many units? Because inside the bracket affect the 
um, affect the um, x value, right? Oh, so this one means shifting to the right. But also, there's one more key thing that you need to know, okay, which is very, very important. So this one's kind of tricky for the q value right here, yeah? So whenever I look at the shift, okay, I need to look at the multiplication first, okay? So that's why some students will make mistakes. So they will just write 4 right here and then shift to the right. But you actually ignore because this one will multiply inside. So it's not actually equal to 4, right? So you need to find out the q value as well. So how do you find a q value right here? So we have learned the equation that is a cosine bx plus c plus d, right? So b times period equals 2 pi, right? 2 pi refers to the uh, cycle of the cosine, right? One cycle of the cosine is 2 pi, which is 360 degree. So this is always 2 pi right here for cosine graph, right? And b value, which is the q value right here. So that, that's what you need to find out. So q times something equals 2 pi, right? So what is the period right here? So period means the horizontal distance that will complete one graph. So now obviously we know half of the cosine graph starting from 4 and then here is 10, right? So the distance here is 10 minus 4 which is equal to 6. So how do you complete the whole graph? That will be 6 times 2 is 12, right? So you can just multiply by 12. 2 pi over 12 is pi over 6. So q is equal to pi over 6 and that's it, right? Okay, and then after that, you need to find the R value, right? Find the R value. So how do you do that? So we know that the graph originally, okay, here is zero, right? Okay. And then what happened is that the zero will multiply with power six. So nothing happened, right? But the end point will shrink, right? Because uh, the pi... Uh, here is like pi over 6, right? Well, pi over 6 should be like x then. Okay, sorry. But anyway, what you need to know is the starting point, okay? The starting point is 0 right here, right? If you multiply or divide anything, so basically nothing changed because 0 multiply or divide anything will be equal to 0. So in that case, then you can just look at the shift. And then after I multiply with this, then what happened is that it will shift to the right because for this point, we'll look at the maximum point. So the original graph stick to the y-axis and then shift to the right by four units. So r is equal to four. Yeah, you get that? Okay. And then finally, how do you find the s? So s here is the upward, slope, uh, upward shift or downward shift. Yeah, so there's a faster way for you to solve. Uh, some school will teach you to draw a line, find the middle line, and then count the numbers, okay? But that's too slow. So now I'll, I'll teach you a new method that is called y max minus the amplitude. So what is the y max? The y max is 12, the largest number in y, right? What is the, uh, what is the amplitude? The amplitude is equal, to, um, is equal to 9, right? So 12 minus 9, that is equal to 3. So s is equal to 3. So shift up by three units, right? Does that make sense to you? And that's it. So we know that P equals nine, R equals four, Q equals three, and Q, um, S equals three, and Q is equal to pi over six, and that's it. And for this part, combined with the differentiation. So we got F prime of X. So F X is equal to nine, cos pi over six, and then X minus um, the R value is equal to, how many? R equals to four and then plus 3, yeah? So how do you differentiate affix? Differentiate cosine, you get negative, negative sine. So it's 9 times negative sine. We keep the same bracket, right? And then differentiate inside the bracket, which is equal to pi over 6, yeah? So finally, just cross it out. This one will be 3 and 2. So negative 3 pi over 2 sine pi over 6 times x minus 4. Do you get that? Okay. And then, um, finally, for this one, at this point C, the gradient is equal to 1.5 pi. Okay, find the great x coordinate of C. So what does it mean by gradient? Gradient, we all know that is f prime of x. So you know that we have to make 
differentiation equals to minus 1.5 pi, right? So that will be negative 3 pi over 2 sine pi over 6 x minus 4 equals to minus 3 over 2 pi. Minus 1.5 is minus 3 over 2, right? So this one, you can multiply to the right inside, that becomes 1. So pi sine how many would equal to pi, uh, equals to 1. So you know that is right here, it's pi over 2, right? So then you know that the whole bracket here, pi over 6, x minus 4, is equal to pi over 2. And then you solve for x. So you multiply this side, 6 over 2 is 3, pi over pi cancel out, and then x is equal to 7, right? Okay, so the slope is equal to minus 1.5 pi would be at x is equal to 7. That means it will be somewhere here, right? Okay, so 7. Yeah, so then we can move on to the next page.